Pakistan's Supreme Court scraps a lifetime ban on politicians with convictions from holding office. That's welcome news for former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, who can now run again, but not for jailed former leader Imran Khan. Why? And what's behind this ruling? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Adrian Finnegan. At the start of this week, a conviction would rule a person out from politics for life in Pakistan. But after a Supreme Court ruling on Monday, not anymore. It's good news for politicians like former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, but not so good for another former Premier, Imran Khan, who's currently in jail. The ruling only helps those who are banned for life, like Sharif. He's now free to run again in elections next month and for a fourth term as Prime Minister. As Khan has been barred from office by the courts for five years, and not for life, it doesn't apply for him. So, why has this ruling been made now, and how big are the political implications? We'll be asking those questions from our guests in just a few moments. But first, this report on the court decision from Malakhabe Mutsepi. After weeks of deliberations, Pakistan's highest court has scrapped a lifetime ban on politicians with convictions contesting the elections. The ruling makes it possible for former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to take part in the polls for the fourth time in elections due in February. His party, the Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz, is considered the most likely to win. His biggest rival, former cricketer and Prime Minister Imran Khan, is sidelined from the upcoming elections. That's after he was banned from politics in Pakistan for five years, following his arrest on corruption charges that he denies. Both Sharif and Khan have blamed the military for ousting them from power. Leading up to his arrest and crackdown on his party, the Tariq e Insaf, Khan had publicly criticized army leaders at a party rally in 2022. And Sharif has accused the military of orchestrating his removal in 2017 over his economic policies and moves to improve relations with neighboring India. The military has denied it wields that level of political influence. Pakistan faces a deepening economic crisis with accelerating job losses, soaring inflation and high energy prices. According to its Statistics Bureau, inflation rose by nearly 30 percent in December. The country has received a bailout package from the IMF, but that forced it to implement strict austerity measures. Whoever is declared the next prime minister faces an uphill battle to improve the lives of more than 240 million people, many of them already struggling with poverty. Malakhaba Mudzebe, Al Jazeera for Inside Story. So let's bring in our guests for today's discussion. From Islamabad, we're joined by Rauf Hassan, the Central Information Secretary of Imran Khan's political party, Pakistan Tariq e Insaf. In Karachi, the capital of Sindh province, we're joined by Mohammed Zubair Umar. He's the province's former governor, representing Nawaz Sharif's political party, the Pakistan Muslim League. And also in Islamabad, we have Musharraf Zaidi, the founding partner of the advisory services firm Tabad Lab and a former advisor to Pakistan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Thank you all uh, for joining us. Rauf, let's start with you. What do you make of this decision by the Supreme Court? The outcome of the decision has political implications, but why now, just a month ahead of the election? Thank you. Uh... We have known it all along. We've known it for a long time that it was coming. So it did not come as a surprise to us. Uh, this is part of the larger conspiracy, you know, that uh, uh, started with uh, the ouster of Imran Khan government back in April of uh, 2021. And since then, you know, things have been moving, you know, uh, in the direction uh, that we rejected their vote. This is all part of, uh, uh, of, of uh, what we generally refer to as the London plan uh, between the establishment and Nawaz Sharif. Uh, uh, it started unfurling, you know, when the government, when Imran Khan's government was first removed, and then it went on to taking the subsequent measures, you know, to enable him to come back to Pakistan and then to take part in the in the next elections uh, and to be anointed as uh, as the king. Uh, unfortunately, uh, institutions of the country uh, have been completely liquidated; have, have virtually uh, they don't exist any longer at this juncture. When we talk, uh, we have five governments the center and the four province 
all these four provinces, all these governments are unconstitutional and illegal because they have lived beyond uh, their mandated period of 90 days. Elections have not been held in spite of the constitutional stipulations uh, uh, that that constitution has been has been has been you know rubbished time and time again. No institution of the state has uh, has paid any heed to, to to stipulations contained therein. Okay. So uh, we are not surprised, you know. And at this juncture, it has come at this juncture. Uh, uh, because uh, it's important, you know, to bring him in, uh, because that is what the original London plan stated. Uh, 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 in the in the process, I must say uh, that the rule of law practically has been kicked off the scene here in the country for a long time to come. Uh, uh, the the fact, you know, that Nawaz Sharif has uh, looted this country, you know, was uh, is is a proven reality, and uh, nobody had any doubts about it when the case was first heard. You know. Uh, about five, five, six, seven, eight years ago, uh, he was not able to provide any proof of the income uh, that he had generated, that he had garnered over a period of almost two decades. Okay, and it was so, on the basis of that, you know, that he well, was, he was, he was, he was, he was punished. Right. Well, well let, now, let this, in, let's, in let's, of, Ruf, let, 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 just, I just take half a minute, half a very minute. Very quickly, very quickly. Uh, five days, six days. Uh, all these cases have been written off. And he's free to take part in the election. You know, this is a travesty of justice, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Mohammed Zubair Umar, you heard there the accusation that Nawaz Sharif looted the country. How will voters in Pakistan view this Supreme Court uh, ruling? Actually, there are two things. One is uh, uh, the ruling itself, the original ruling, where uh, when uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif was disqualified for life, that was in 2017. On a Purely trumped up charge. I think Mr. Rauf, uh, if he had uh, gone through the ruling, it was not based on any plundering of money. The Supreme Court never ever said hey, it is based on plundering of money. But, it was for a very, very uh, simple but, 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 uh, logic. Mohammed, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I mean, if, if you're saying that, that the charges against Nawaz Sharif were trumped up, then, then surely the charges against Imran Khan are also trumped up. No, no, let me finish about Mr. Nawaz Sharif, about this particular. Uh, decision of the Supreme Court when he was disqualified for life. If, if you read the ruling, and Mr. Rao must have read the ruling, it simply says that there was uh, a receivable from his son's salary, which Mr. Nawaz Sharif failed to disclose in his returns, tax returns. Now, if this is a crime, and you can imagine anywhere in the world, it would not even invite an accountant to be demoted. And here, the prime minister, the three-time prime minister who was legally, constitutionally elected, and who enjoyed the majority in the parliament, was uh, thrown out for life, that he cannot do uh, any uh, politics. There are two things about it. First, the disqualification itself, it was on trumped up charges. The second thing is, no one in Pakistan agreed to this fact that any politician, uh, whether it is Mr. Imran Khan tomorrow, uh, should be disqualified for life. And it's not just Mr. Nawaz Sharif, who will benefit out of this decision. It is also Mr. Jahangir Kithreen, who was a very close aide or a very close uh, politician in the uh, party of Mr. Imran Khan, who was also disqualified for life. So he also benefits. He heads another party today. So he also benefits. And this was never something that anyone in Pakistan agreed. And you must also go through uh, Pakistan's judicial history where uh, it is coming full circle now. Many of the decisions that uh, uh, courts had taken in the past several decades now are being reversed, including the decision to hang the former Prime Minister, Mr. Zulfakar Ali Bhutto, is being heard 40, 45 years okay. after he was hanged. Because everyone wants that justice should be done, even if the decision at that time was wrong. All right. But, Mushanaf, I'll, I'll come to you in just a moment. I just want to give a right of reply, though, to, to Raouf there very quickly, Raouf. Well, what what uh, uh, what the gentleman has said basically, you know, does not cut any ice. So far as I'm concerned, basically, is uh, the fact, you know, that Nawaz uh, looted this country, plundered this country, not once but through through his three stints in power, is an established reality. Why is it that he was not able to produce anything before the court for for the billions, you know, that he has? Why is it that he was not able to produce any any proof before the court for the properties, lavish properties that he has uh, purchased all over the world? Why is it that he was not able to prove? Why is it that he submitted a fake letter, Tatari letter? Why is it that he, the 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 family used a fake uh, uh, Calibri font uh, before? I mean, they, 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 their letter was produced in the court, you know, uh, typed in Calibri font before it was uh, 
before it was uh, introduced in the market. All these facts are there. Okay. In the in the Supreme Court, uh, right. any, any, any anybody who, who stands up to defend a looter and plunderer, you know, okay. basically is doing it at the cost of justice in this country. Musharraf, just uh, 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 sorry to keep you waiting. We will get to you in a moment, Mohammed. Just just come back quickly on that. Actually, it's very interesting. Uh, Mr. Rauf is uh, obviously uh, telling us uh, why Mr. Nawashi was punished without uh, going through the actual reality. He was punished. He was disqualified for life simply on the basis of, if I'm wrong, Mr. Musharraf Zaidi can correct it uh, or otherwise. He was punished, disqualified for life because he did not show. That is the ruling that he did not show a receivable, which he, from an accounting standpoint, financial standpoint, he was never supposed to reflect uh, as an individual, as a receivable. And he was, that is why, first, the the nature of the punishment, uh, the nature of the crime that was listed, and then the, 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 uh, the punishment itself, uh, to punish someone for a lifetime right. that you cannot do politics uh, ever. Okay, M Musharraf, um, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, had Nawaz Sharif been treated unfairly by the courts in Pakistan, was he the victim of a miscarriage of justice? To, to what extent was the Supreme Court writing an injustice here? And, and, and if so, what about the treatment of Imran Khan? How, how do people view his treatment? Look, I, regardless of how many times you ask partisans of one or the other party in this country, the answers are always going to be the same. The supporters of Nawaz Sharif will rightly feel vindicated by the correcting of what is uh, the entire process uh, was deeply uh, biased and uh, prejudiced against any chance of Nawaz Sharif being able to govern the country that he was elected to govern in 2013. And these games didn't begin with the, with the court case that emerged from the Panama leaks. These uh, games begun the day he was elected. And there's a whole, uh, a whole sort of a massive uh, sort of reams of evidence uh, that that indicates that the conspiracy to get rid of Nawaz Sharif, uh, you know, predates the Panama. So this court case, you know, happened to be kind of the end zone for sort of uh, a process that began much earlier. Similarly, uh, the process to get rid of Imran Khan began the moment uh, the military, the very military that brought Imran Khan to power, decided that it didn't want to concede the rightful powers of the prime minister to the prime minister and wanted to retain uh, key decision making around key appointments and around key relationships that Pakistan has within the domain of the military. Uh, ultimately, uh, to my mind, when I listen to, and, and both these men are uh, brilliant sons of Pakistan, whether it's Rauf Hassan or Zubair Umar, uh, they've tried to serve Pakistan uh, over many years through different sort of ways, and obviously they've chosen different political parties to try and build up this country. But just to remind viewers what this country is, this is one of two countries on the planet that still has the polio virus that it's fighting. This is uh, a country of 250 million people with a median age of 23, in which the debate we're having today is about whether a 74-year-old is guilty or innocent or a 71-year-old is guilty or innocent. Meanwhile, the median 23-year-old Pakistani woman or man are up the creek without any prospect for serious economic growth in the near future, with an almost certain debt crisis that is hanging over the heads of every decision maker in this country, with a massive security crisis fueled not only by the Taliban's uh, desire to expand its influence beyond the borders of Afghanistan, but also the uh, Hindu supremacist and hate-mongering uh, regime in India that has been on a mission to punish Pakistan for existing. Uh, this is the scenario within which the Pakistani people are subjected to a political contest between a 74-year-old and a 71-year-old, neither of whom have any real answers okay. for Pakistan, both of whom are the product of the military's interventions so, in Pakistan's politics. So, so what, what you're saying, Musharraf, is that the Pakistan's political system is, is failing its people. Uh, how do you fix that, though? Well, I think the starting point is that politicians need to be able to run for office without the fear of 
knowing that they will eventually be facing a jail term. I think as long as this kind of antagonism between popular leaders and uh, the military establishment continues, uh, we'll continue to have this cycle. It's, it shouldn't be lost on anyone. The irony of Imran Khan uh, facing indictments in cases that are largely broadly as bogus as the cases that Nawaz Sharif was first convicted for and then let go for. Rauf, as you heard, Sharif, 74, Imran Khan is 71, and the median age in Pakistan is 23. Is Sharif really the man that the electorate want to put their faith in to improve their lot? Why can't Pakistan offer the electorate candidates who have more in common with the country's demographics? Well, unfortunately, uh, there have never been any free election in Pakistan. Uh, there has been intervention from the establishment, uh, and that has, in fact, increased with the passage of time, particularly after the accident of General Musharraf. Um, if, if uh, in a, you know, answering your question, you know, just I would just, just, just want one thing to be done: hold free, fair, and inclusive elections with equal level playing field to all, and see who do the people of this country want to be elected as the prime minister of the country. I challenge everybody who supports anybody other than Imran Khan. In short that free, fair, and inclusive elections are held in this country. And let the people decide. This is what PTI stands for. And this, unfortunately, is being denied not just to PTI, but to the people of this country, who are being increasingly disenfranchised. I would like, I can go over a bit cora of evidence, you know, in support of what I'm saying. But uh, I, do, I don't think the, the, the time would permit me to do that. But even, you know, if you go over what has happened in the last couple of months, I mean, to, to an extent, you know, our people, I mean, our people have been, have been kidnapped, people have been tortured, they have been forced to convert their political loyalties. Uh, over over 10,000 people have been put in jails, they're being denied bails. Uh, there are people uh, in that group you know, who have been re-arrested up to 30 times. Mm -hmm. But the courts bail them out, they're arrested in some other case, and some other cooked up case, some other frivolous case. Do they get they get bailed again, they're again arrested. People have been arrested, re-arrested 30 times, up to 30 times, and multiple times, all other people have been uh, arrested multiple times. Ralph, do you want do you want to come uh, back on, field on, on is being denied. Do, do you want just to, to say come... just take a minute just the level playing field is being denied we are not allowed any political activity hmm. uh this is an uneven uh, uh sort of you know surface you know which is being presented to political parties so consequently what i want to say is this the, the it's it's pre-orchestrated they have already decided that 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 the Ashrif is going to be the next prime minister of the country and everything is being done to facilitate that be it hmm. the courts be it, be it the administration be it whatever that is very important. Okay. We demand so, free, fair, and inclusive elections. Mohammed Zubair Umar, what do you make of yeah. that before, before I put another question to you? I mean, there are two things. Uh, first is uh, what uh, Rauf uh, is demanding is absolutely normal. And uh, there should be no disagreement to that, that Pakistan needs a free, fair, and transparent election and inclusive election that allows every political party, including the Pakistan Tariq Insaf or Mr. Imran Khan, to fully participate without any problem. The debate in Pakistan today is very interesting. And what Musharraf Zaidi was referring to is absolutely spot on. The issues that the people of Pakistan, not just the 23-year-olds, but even the 30 or 35-year-old Pakistanis, the challenges for them is not about who is more corrupt and who has gone through a rougher time uh, between Mr. Nawaz Sharif and Mr. Uh, Imran Khan. The problems that Pakistan faces today are largely economic and social uh, or development uh, nature, for example, a lack of education, lack of uh, health care system, clean drinking water, very basic problems. The amount of uh, Pakistanis under uh, poverty line is staggering. So the problems that Pakistan faces today is much worse. Unfortunately, the, the debate uh, in Pakistan today is whether 2018 election was more rigged or the one that is coming up in February this year is going to be more rigged. So it's a debate, not that the PTI people deny the fact that it, what whatever was happening in 2018 and the manner in which they were brought into power, they were fine with it. 
they never even okay. looked back to say that what is happening with uh, with the then ruling party pakistan muslim league the way it was uh, butchered and the way that rigging was done uh, a full phase of uh, changing political loyalties that uh, mr rauf uh, was mentioning okay. the entire province of balochistan for example one night the loyalties of the entire ruling party then the ruling party pakistan muslim league nawaz was changed to a new party okay, that was created overnight if, so that has if, been going on with pakistan but yes i do yeah. agree with mr rauf that pakistan needs not to spend time uh, in comparing whether 2018 was bad or worse or okay. 2024 is going to be worse we need yeah. free fair transparent election to have credibility with everyone including those outside pakistan if if sir nawaz sharif becomes prime minister for the fourth time um next month is is he going to see out his 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 fourth term how long will the people and the military give him to turn around the economy and improve the lot of people if, if what would your advice be to him uh, unfortunately the history of pakistan has been very very bad no prime minister has lasted 5 uh, years uh, typically it's the fourth year in which uh, the prime ministers are shown the door and they are removed or kicked out whatever you can make out and it's not just going out it's then the piling of the cases against them the jailing and the references that goes around um whether this is going to be a new era in pakistan's history uh, i don't know i can't say uh, the problems that pakistan faces today there's got there's going there is definitely going to be some friction between various institutions in pakistan the prime minister obviously would feel that he has been elected on the basis of the mandate that the people of pakistan has given him and he must decide uh, based on those uh, whatever he thinks is the right way that pakistan should move forward whether the military will give him enough space um we hope so we would demand that uh, but when we look back um, uh, it's going to be a new pakistan if that happens uh, musharraf um uh, uh, if nawaz sharif becomes uh, prime minister uh, next month is is he the man to turn around um the the economy and improve the lot of of pakistan's people and, and why this this sense of perpetual crisis this this in 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 pakistan what what's different about pakistan when it would seem that very similar political systems in both india and and bangladesh are able to deliver for their people absolutely right it's not just india or bangladesh you have a uh, military dominated uh, political uh, sort of Uh, situations or ecosystems like indonesia that has been going from strength to strength over the same two two decades uh where pakistan has been going from strength to weakness and weakness to further weakness uh you have countries like turkey that were complete basket cases economically uh where the military was dominant where capable political leaders uh enacted a series of reforms that not only grew the economy but also wrested control of matters that should be in civilian hands away from the military and to civilians so i guess the question that your viewers would have or that you've asked is what is unique about pakistan that doesn't seem that this doesn't seem to happen and i think part of the answer is the utter incompetence and lack of imagination of the political leadership itself uh the reason these parties are not talking about education or human capital the reason they're not talking about the impact of artificial intelligence on the uniquely syncretic islamic and muslim culture in pakistan the reason that people in this country in the political circles amongst the elite are not talking about tax reform and instead are constantly looking to secure flights to riyadh or to abu dhabi or to doha to secure uh the next uh easy term loan from one of the gcc benefactors that this country has had for many decades there is a reason for that and the reason is that these issues the issues that really matter for the people of pakistan uh they don't have any answers for these issues they don't have any uh think tanks within the political parties these are not issues that pinch or bother or drive or inform uh the day to day pain points of our key political parties and our biggest and most important political leaders uh having said all this where does the responsibility for curating nurturing uh, tolerating sustaining getting rid of and then bringing back these very politicians lie 
That responsibility lies on the military establishment that okay. has consistently well, sought and secured the, this quality of political leader for this country. Well, 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 Sean, regardless then of who wins the election next month, do you fear that another period of martial law in Pakistan is, is more or less inevitable? I, I don't think that the instrument of engagement for the military any longer needs to be martial law. I think that because of the incompetence of politicians and their lack of imagination, the military can very easily exercise total and complete control over key areas of the economy and diplomacy and policy that it wishes to. I think my complaint or, or, or my, my sort of uh, my pain point is that in doing so, it isn't or it hasn't yet, at least, demonstrated the kind of quality or competence that would justify okay. people to say, you know what, the politicians are incompetent, but hey, the military's got this. Okay. Now, when it comes to national security, I, I just want to make this one key point. Very quickly, when it very comes quickly. to national security, when it comes to national security, there is no army or, or military in the world that has been able to do what Pakistani military officers and soldiers do on a regular basis. So okay. when they do their job, they do an amazing job. The problem is when they do the politicians' job, they do about as good a job as the politicians, okay. and that doesn't serve Pakistanis very well at all. Right. We've got about 30 seconds for each of you, Rauf and uh, uh, Mohammed Zubair, uh, Umar. Um, uh, basically, I think what we were, what Musharraf was saying there is that Pakistan will never succeed uh, economically or politically until the military is, is, is out of the picture. Rauf. Well, I would not like to um, cast aspersions on any political leader at this point in time. All I want, all PTI wants, is that Pakistan should have, for once, free, fair, and inclusive elections without any outside interference, including from the establishment. That is easier said than done, because the military has, my, con my contention has always been that they have controlled Pakistan for all the 76 years, either directly or indirectly okay. through, their, right. through, through their through their touts okay. of opposition in, in, in positions of power. And final thoughts, please, from uh, Mohammed Zubair Omar. Yeah, yeah, it's very simple. I think we all agree on the constitution of Pakistan. Every institution, every political leader or political party is committed to establishing the constitutional framework, and which and that calls for civilian supremacy, and which okay. has a very clear-cut role for the military. And I think if the boundaries are adhered to by all institutions, including the military, okay. I think that uh, obviously would be the best way I, I, going forward. Thanks to all our guests, Rauf Hassan, Mohammed Zubair, Umar, and Musharraf Zaidi. And thank you, too, for watching. You can see the program again at any time by going to the website at aljazeera.com. For further discussion, join us at our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. And you can join the conversation on X, our handle at AJ Inside Story. From me, Adrian Finnegan, and the team here in Doha, we'll see you again. Bye for now.